Okay, welcome back, guys. I'm um, sorry I had to cut the other video. Um, I was at the point where I needed to check out some stuff, uh, make sure recording was okay. Unfortunately, uh, I'm a poor boy, and I don't have a good microphone, so uh, when you get to deal with uh, me and uh, my robotic-sounding, I'm talking through a toilet paper tube voice. Uh, so at any rate, here we are now. Um, I've set up the squadron and chose a crew, uh, finished out the naming of the other bombers and stuff, which I'll show you in a little bit, uh, because we can take a look at them here in the squadron commander's office, which is who we are. If you notice, we have the bomber commander's office, and that's off limits. Uh, we can't go in there. So uh, the other room we can go into is our operations room, which is where we will set up missions, choose bomb targets, stuff like that. So uh, let me show you what I off-screened over here real quick. Uh, we'll go in here. Um, you are the uh, squadron commander uh, in this particular setting I've chose. Uh, and the interesting thing about it is uh, ship rolls downhill. So you have a boss, and uh, even though you're the boss. So the worse your squadron does, like if we go out on a mission, we miss the target, um, we don't do any damage to it, a whole bunch of people are killed or hurt or wounded, stuff like that, We'll hear about it from our boss. He's not going to be a happy guy. So we have an in-tray, which uh, we can read mail and stuff. Usually at the end of missions, we'll get reports, stuff like that. Uh, we got our crew information file, our bomber information file. Um, there's 12 bombers to a squadron, uh, so about 120 guys. If I can do math good, which I don't think I can, so don't quote me on that. Um, we have a medical file. This will show us who's hurt and wounded. Uh, when they'll be back, if they'll be back, stuff like that. So uh, this is our history file. As we uh, bomb targets and stuff, we'll be able to go back and take a look at the history and see how well the report we did. And uh, then we can go outside and look at our bombers, which we'll do right now. Um, so as you can see, we have our plane, uh, which is the one that my character, Tailgunner, is going to be on. Uh, Zom, or Lee Zong is what I think I believe I named him. What I think I believe. Yeah, that works. At any rate, we have Liberty Bell, Memphis Bell, Chow Hound, Mother and Country, Guardian Angel, The Eagle's Wrath, Target for Tonight, Captain and the Kids, Bub, Sally B, and Tough Stuff. All of them with kind of um, close matching uh, nose art. Um, we'll take a look at Target for Tonight, for example. Um, so we can move around and zoom in on it, and as you can see, you choose different nose art and stuff. Uh, this is also an important aspect of the game, because let's say we just got back from the mission, this was all shot up and stuff. We can take a look at, and see uh, its mechanical status. Um, sometimes bombers can still fly back, but they'll be in such a terrible condition that you'll want to scrap them. Um, because sometimes you won't have enough parts and stuff like that, so you're going to scrap and all that fun stuff. Um, a, lot of, a lot of management going on, but uh, at any rate, um, let's take a look at uh, the crew for our lead bomber. This is important too. Um, this is our bombardier, and we can see that they have different skills in different sections. They have morale, which I'm not 100% how sure how morale affects this game, because a lot of people are going to start with low morale, if I if I remember correctly. So uh, it's probably a bad thing. At any rate, his bomb aiming is above average. Now we can trade crew members among all the different bombers. So generally what I like to do is find out who has the best bomb aiming, and I want to put them in the lead plane. Because when the lead plane drops its bombs, that's when all the other bombers in the squadron are going to drop their payloads. So we want to make sure the guy in the lead plane is the best bomber. So it looks like it's got an average jack shoe there. It's this guy. He's got good bomb aiming. Might be going with Oscar Grun. So, I might um, later on off screen all this boring crap, unless it's really important. Like, if I'm getting cussed out by like my superior for like, getting everybody in the squadron killed, you'll probably want to be able to point and laugh about that. So, David Smiley, what a cool name. From the Eagle's Wrath. Let me take him. Just going through all this bull crap. Probably gonna off screen this. Might edit it out, not sure. Doop doop doop. 
it. So lucky number seven, it looks like we're going to choose David Smiley. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and off screen that and uh, just kind of set up, make sure he's the bomber and stuff. It's just paperwork at this point. And then uh, we'll come back and I'll start, uh, I'll start uh, setting up for the next mission. And we'll choose a target and all that fun stuff. So, okay, uh, back from all that jibble jabble there. <laughs> I sure will use that as a word. Um, so at any rate, uh, David Smiley should be set up. Um, excuse me, this is kind of weird. Me and my ghetto mic here. Okay. Um, so we've got him set up and everything else. So now let's uh, go ahead and uh, finally get to some action. I'm sure you guys are quite sick of just me blithering. So uh, let's do this. As you can see, this is the mission planning room. We can choose aircraft. So like if we have a damage bomber that uh, for whatever reason we don't want to scrap or something, we can uh, we can exclude it from the mission. Uh, we can choose different ordinances. Sometimes you'll notice like cluster bombs are good if you're trying to get rid of like large troop concentrations and stuff like that. But um, let's go ahead and see where we're at in the world and plan a mission out. Okay, so it looks like Thurlay is kind of like right in the middle. So it's going to be us here. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I don't remember how to do this. Okay. Um, I'm used to games now where it's all like mouse and not the keyboard. Um, by the way, you guys are probably going to hate this because I noticed in my last video when I typed out the name of my bomber and stuff and probably using my keypad keys here, it uh, it thumps because I'm using my internal built-in microphone because the uh, the only headset I have is a piece of crap. So still get to hear all the thumping of the keyboard and me talking through a toilet paper tube type sounds. So anyway, um, Historically, if I remember right, the 8th Army Air Force was concerned about the uh, Luftwaffe and uh, trying to uh, get rid of them in whatever way they needed. Uh, so anything that had to do with aircraft, oil production, anything that could go into putting a fighter in the skies, they tried to stop, if I'm remembering correctly, which I'm probably not. But I think that's going to be the focus of my mission. Um, my campaign here is I'm going to try to uh, really cut the Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe off at the knees. Um, I want to try to take as many of their planes out of the air as possible so we can start hitting targets a little bit easier without having to worry about getting shot down all the time so we can really start hitting like a lot of the major like military production stuff that will start hurting ground forces and just kind of carry the war a little better. So uh, let's find a nice, easy target for our first mission, since uh, we don't want to get shut, shot down right away and killed, which is distinctly possible. I'll probably take a piece of flak to the face and die. Um, let's see here. We've got harbors and U-boats. Production here. The V1 sites, those are probably helpful since England at this time. It's December 1st, 43. They're probably taking V1 rockets to the face all the time. London, stuff like that. Um, so we've got three different oil production facilities right here. And uh, what town is that? It doesn't quite tell us what town it is. Um, these dark red rings are flak. Um, that's the boundaries and how far flak can shoot. And uh, this big blue line is where we'll start encountering fighters. So as you can see, not only are we going to be dealing with fighters coming in here, but we're also going to be dealing with uh, with uh, a lot of flak. And flak in this game can be quite deadly. I've seen it come up in the hit like a bomber right in the wing, just perfect enough, and it just lit up not only the ordnance that was inside of it, but uh, it hit the fuel tanks. It was pretty bad. Um, I think I want to hit the Bethune oil production facility, though. I mean... War is carried by how much oil a country has. You know, every vehicle in a military faction needs oil. So uh, we're going to choose Bethane as our primary target. And as you can see, you just drag and drop. You've got primary, secondary, and a tertiary targets for second and third targets. So if for whatever reason we can't hit Bethane, we can choose. I'm going to go ahead and say Lieben as our secondary. And Harns is going to be our final target. And as we're flying, we'll also have targets of opportunity. So if we come across something that isn't on this map, because we also need to do recons, 
um, which we won't be a part of. The AI takes care of recon. It's like a different squad does that or something. But at any rate, um, if we come across target opportunity, we could decide to hit that one too in the air. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of deal with this, try to keep us out of flak as much as possible. Again, it's pretty boring, so I'm probably going to cut this part out um, as if the whole video isn't already boring. <laughs> anyway, be right back. Going to do that whole choppy chop thing. Okay, um, so I went ahead and uh, just adjusted the routes and stuff, try to keep us out of flak as much as possible. Um, so let's go ahead and choose our ordinance. Uh, generally, it, it selects something uh, that it thinks is comparable or good enough for whatever mission you're, uh, you chose. Since we're bombing a factory, we're not really going to need these anti-personnel things. So I think I'm going to go with a 100 pound incendiary. So we have general purpose 1,000 pound and a couple of uh, incendiary 100 pounds. It's an oil production facility. Should uh, should burn up pretty well. So uh, here we can see our target intelligence. If I had have chosen to do recon any targets, which at this point in time I didn't, um, so we'll, we're not going to really have any idea what we're going into, which is generally a bad thing. But on your first target, you can't really help that. We've got to start carrying this war, so we've got to do something. So, chose that up. So now let's go ahead and uh, receive our briefing and uh, take on this mission. So our primary target is the Bethune Oil Production Facility. Secondary is going to be Leaven, and our tertiary is going to be Harns. Looks like we're going to have 14 bombs in total. Four of those are 1,000 pound general purpose. Ten of those are going to be 100 pound incendiaries. Uh, we're going to be flying a total of 481 miles, which, don't worry, there is time skipping. And if worse comes to worse, I will edit out all of that because that will take several hours in real time. We're going to have two squadrons of P-47 Lightnings um, escorting us, which is good news. We're not sure how much uh, we're going to uh, run into fighters, but they're definitely going to be there. Uh, it looks like we're going to have moderate flak strength to deal with. Our fighter strength is low. I don't know how they know that, but uh, it still doesn't really mean anything. It, it, You've got a squad of like FW-190s coming at you. Not only are they tough, but they'll cut B-17s to ribbons. Uh, we haven't damaged it before, but we notice that the priority on this is high because it is an oil production facility. It's a very small facility, concerned with the storage and further refinement of oil. Uh, although small in size, produce important types of fuel useful for aircraft and vehicles. So it's perfect. Hitting these targets will affect the local fuel levels and lower the supply demand. So not only is it going to start hurting the Luftwaffe, but it looks like it's going to hurt the German war effort in general. So uh, same could be said for our other targets. So we're going to go ahead as squadron commander and sign off on this, and uh, hopefully not carry one in, anyone to their doom. Okay, so here's our plane, um, General's daughter. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. We've got Jack Shave as our pilot, Tom Busby as our co-pilot. In the nose compartment, we have David Smiley, who's our new lead bomber. Uh, Rob Hammond is our navigator. Uh, navigators can get lost. That's not good, because we've got a limited fuel supply. Um, you can barely see his leg, but there's Sean Chance crammed in here with all the bombs. He's the top turret gunner. Uh, he's pretty well important. He's got 360 degrees of defensive coverage on our plane for us. In our radio room, we're going to have Mariano Cavanaugh, who uh, he'll keep in contact with base. He can get weather up updates. He can tell the plane to leave the squadron, all that stuff. He stays in contact with our bombing base here. Uh, in the waste, we have Roy Russell as our ball turret gunner. You can barely see his ass crack there. <laughs> Under these other guys, who are the two waste gunners, Mark Mantacolo and Mark Fish, two Marks. And then finally, we have myself, Lee Zom, over here in uh, the uh, tail. And I'm basically the protection of the rear of the plane. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start the mission. And the way we do that is by uh, going to the instrument view of our radio operator and telling him to announce the beginning of the start mission. Start engines. Master switch on. Cow flaps, open left, open right, and as ignition to both. As you can tell, they're gonna start doing the Mixture whole auto uh, red. the whole startup sequence here. Gonna talk over Booster these guys. On. Probably won't hear me. It seems pretty loud. Energizing. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this, but I will show the takeoff. Meshing. Uh, so we'll just cut out the start and taxi. So I'll be right back when we get when we get out of here.